Welcome to Morning Prayer for Friday, September 11th. I'm so glad you're, you made it here today. If you're here for the first time, I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can have easy access to all of our prayers and services. Below this video, you'll find a link to an online bulletin if you'd like to follow along, and also an email address if you'd like to send us a prayer request. Well, let's get started with our opening sentences. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge God's name. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 56. Be gracious to me, O God, for people trample on me. All day long foes oppress me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many fight against me. O oh, Most High, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I am not afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they seek to injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps, as they hoped to have my life. So repay them. For their crime. In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will retreat in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust. I am not afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? My vows to you I must perform, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death and my feet from falling, so that I may walk before God in the light of life. Today's scripture is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham he said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall provide, be provided. 
The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The journey of Abraham with his family from his hometown in Ur of the Chaldeans to the land of Canaan was long and arduous. I reflected on what we can learn from that journey back in April. I pointed out that we might each want, that we might eat, want to have something in our homes to remind us of God by creating an altar with stones and maybe a candle to create a place of peace in our home. Abraham regularly marked spots on his journey with an altar where he would make a sacrifice to God. This story of Abraham marks a very dark moment for Abraham. He's been devoted to God all his life and listened to the calls upon his life with great obedience. He took the long journey to get to the land of Canaan. He and his wife finally had a child, which seemed impossible at their age. Their joy must have been overwhelming. The promise that God had made to Abraham would finally start coming to fruition now that he had offspring in Isaac. And now God sends him on a new terrible journey to Moriah. In the instructions, God doesn't give a specific place right away, but a specific task to do. Abraham is to sacrifice this one and only son to God. During these three days of travel, we do not read in the Bible what's going through Abraham's mind, but we don't really have to. We can imagine the kind of grief he must have been feeling to know what God has asked of him, but not share it. Was he conflicted? Did he pause and wonder what God was up to? We don't really know. We just do know that this was a journey of a lifetime, even beyond that which he had already achieved. The element that kept consistent with Abraham's character was that of obedience, of trust. And God was testing him to be absolutely sure that Abraham's love for God was greater than that for his son. One thing that made this journey significant was in the willingness for him to travel the 50 or 60 long, desolate miles to prove it. Then at journey's end, he had to build the altar, pile the wood, light the fire, raise his knife. And because he was listening, he heard the angel call him to stop. God sends each of us on personal journeys, which test our character and give us an opportunity to deepen our commitment to God and his perfect timing. Each of us has a unique challenge to our love for God. There are many things of this world that come or try to come between God and ourselves. It's difficult to let go of that which we deeply love. What could be more proper than to love your only child? Yet when we do give to God what God asks, he returns to us far more than we could dream. The spiritual benefits of God's blessings far outweigh our sacrifices. What do you know you need to give up that you love more than God to recommit yourself to him and then receive God's blessings in abundance? Lord God, we thank you and praise you for knowing us so completely and providing us, providing for our every need. We thank you for giving us opportunities to let us show you how great our trust is in you. We thank you for your abundant love. We ask that as we find ourselves on difficult personal journeys, 
you help us release our grip on those things that we love more than you. We ask for your forgiveness. Please give your guidance and strength on our unique journeys and give us the ears to hear you call us. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Let us continue with prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially, we thank you for the presence of Christ in our weakness and suffering, the ministry of word and sacrament, all who work to help and heal, sacrifices made for our benefit, opportunities for our generous giving. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially, we pray for those subjected to tyranny and oppression, wounded and injured people, those who face death, those who may be our enemies, the church in Latin America, and for those you have given us to pray for in particular. We give thanks for the birth of Charles Wyatt Johnson. We pray for healing for Pastor Johanna, Asia, Devon, Dana, Austin, Patty Ferris, Gary Rowe, and Harold Lund's father. We pray for comfort for Glenn Arnold and all families and those affected by the tragic events that we remember from September 11th, 2001. We pray for protection for the medical teams across the nation working to heal COVID-19 patients, for those fighting for justice for all marginalized persons, and for the firefighters working around the clock to hinder the spread of the wildfires and we lift up any others out loud or in our hearts who are on our hearts and minds this morning that are seeking healing or comfort, discernment, encouragement, or peace. Almighty God, you have made us in your image and crowned us with honor and glory. Shape us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may live as your beloved children and proclaim the good news of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Like good stewards of the grace of God, serve one another with whatever gifts you have received. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.